Hello, welcome to Taming Toxic Plants. This is a University of Wyoming effort to provide advice to ranchers and range managers. My name is Derek Scasta. I'm a faculty member at the University of Wyoming, and today I'm going to be talking about death camas. Now, death camas is a native and perennial bulbous plant. It's in the Liliaceae family. And as you can see in this picture in the right uh, of your screen, it has linear and grass-like leaves. Um, has often been confused with the wild onion. Um, it's also a plant that has been recognized for many decades as a poisonous plant to livestock. You can see this USDA bulletin here that dates back to 1939. So this is a problem we've known about for a long time. In terms of where death camas grows, it's very common on Western rangelands, um, typically in what we would consider dry foothill ranges, and these can include a variety of soils, anything from sandy soils to rocky soils. Um, I live in Laramie, Wyoming, so we're at 7,200 feet. Um, it's very common in the foothills to the east uh, of Laramie, Wyoming. Um, it seldom gets much above 8,000 feet in elevation. Now, these pictures just give you a visual uh, impression of what we're talking about here. Um, again, this is a perennial with grass-like leaves, often in groups of three, especially when it's um, a very young plant. These plants might be anywhere from four to 16 inches tall, and the flowers are often white to a yellowish white um, in clusters elevated on the stalk above the basal leaves. And in this picture here on the left, you can see meadow death camas, and then on the right, foothill death camas. Now, in Wyoming, there's many um, death camas species in the genus Zygodinus. So I have this county map here at the bottom from the USDA plant database. And you can see every county in Wyoming could have death camas in it. And that's the same for Utah and Nevada. And then states like Idaho and Montana, um, the majority of those counties um, could have death camas. And then the western two-thirds of Colorado and then northern New Mexico and northern um, Arizona would also be places where we could find death camas. Now, as I mentioned, there's many species in Wyoming. Um, the ones that we're most concerned about are typically meadow, uh, mountain, foothill, and then Natal's death camas. In terms of animals that can be negatively affected, all classes of livestock can be poisoned. So this can include sheep, cattle, and horses. There's also evidence that pigs and chickens can be poisoned by death camas. Um, and then Humans often have um, confused death camas uh, for a wild onion and they can be poisoned as well. For wildlife, we don't know quite as much. Um, there is evidence that, that I think would suggest that um, the toxin could have a negative effect on livestock. However, we don't know um, if they typically eat it um, and what those outcomes might be, but I would suspect they would um, also be susceptible. Now here's the principal toxin and then the problems that it causes. The toxin is called zygosine, and this is a neurotoxic steroidal alkaloid. And ultimately, this leads to a lowering of the blood pressure, or what we would call hypotensive activity, as opposed to hypertensive. Now, zygosine also alters the sodium ion channels um, up to a thousand times slower. And what this leads to is increased sodium concentrations in the cells that lead to increased nerve and muscle excitability. Now, in the plant material that is above the ground, the toxin tends to decrease through the season. However, the toxin in the bulbs stays consistently high throughout the year. Now, the main problem we get into with grazing animals is in the spring when we have that initial green up of death camas. Um, and you can see in this picture, which I took last spring just east of Laramie, um, this is a death camas plant. You can see it's really the only thing greening up substantially in this picture. And so a grazing animal might think this is a, a very nice thing to consume at that time of the year. In addition, um, this may be one of the only things that elevates above the snow. So access might become a driver of animal intake of death camas. Now for humans, there's also big problems that can occur because humans have often mistaken death camas um, for a wild onion. And there's evidence that this goes back um, many, many years um, in occurrence. So just to kind of show you some of the literature that supports these kind of claims that I'm making, um, on the left is a paper that goes back to 1989. Um, Dr. Panter um, saying here, death camas 
early grazing can be hazardous. So again, it's that early spring season, which um, can cause these issues with grazing animals. I also show two um, articles here that document human poisoning by death camas. Um, and a lot of these are often case studies where there's an individual or a small group of individuals that have been poisoned. Um, and so you can uh, find some of that information if that's of interest to you too, but humans should be wary as well. Now, in terms of the clinical signs, the first is going to be problems of the stomach or gastrointestinal. In this case, um, animals might have excessive salivation and bloody frothing of the mouth. They can be nauseous and they may also vomit. Now, there can also be musculoskeletal problems. These can include weakness, staggering, tremoring of the muscles, ataxia, which is just a general loss of control of the body, and then prostration. Affected animals might have a fast and weak pulse. They might have a hard time breathing. And they may go into a coma. There can also be congestion of lungs and kidneys and then necrosis of skeletal and cardiac muscle. Now, this is ultimately an acute problem, not a chronic problem, but an acute problem where death due to heart failure can occur in affected individuals within hours to days. Now, with this being an acute problem, um, it also doesn't take a whole lot of plant material to cause problems. So in sheep, it's been noted that it only takes about a half a pound of death camas plant material and that symptoms can manifest within one hour of ingestion. In terms of mortality, a hundred pound sheep could be killed by as little as a half a pound to two pounds of death camas plant material. Now the table on the bottom shows the LD50 or lethal dose at which 50% of a population would be killed. Um, of the principal toxin zygosine, and you can see relative to the body mass, we're talking uh, milligrams per kilogram um, for humans um, and sheep and only grams of material um, for um, 600 kilogram uh, body mass cattle. So it doesn't take a lot of material to kill an individual. Now, in terms of diagnosis and treatment, we would certainly want to diagnose the problem first by looking at the range site. And if we noted there was death camas and the conditions were suitable to where animals were grazing it, we can also use some things in our postmortem or necropsy exams, such as pulmonary congestion. Now, in terms of um, veterinary intervention, and of course, you would want to consult with your veterinarian, um, there is some evidence that injection of two milligrams of atropine sulfate and eight milligrams of picrotoxin per 100 pounds of body weight could help reverse problems if um, administered early in the poisoning of sheep. We can also give care um, through supportive therapy with IV fluids that can help combat the hypotension those animals might be dealing with. And then if animals are bloated, we'd wanna position those in a sternal upright position and somehow relieve that gas pressure um, in the rumen. Now, here's a couple of important resources that I refer to quite often. The Green Book is from the USDA ARS, and that's available freely online. Um, the Black Book is specific to Montana and Wyoming. Um, and that's an NRCS book that Montana State University and the University of Wyoming collaborated on. And then Colorado State University has a very nice website um, that is a guide to poisonous plants that is worth um, consulting if these are issues you might be dealing with. And then finally, I've put my email at the bottom um, if I can ever assist you. So um, stay tuned. There'll be more um, plants we'll talk about in, in Taming the Toxic Plants um, series. And I hope that it's a help to you. For Death Camas, we are going into that period of early spring green up. And so now is the time to be paying attention.